Uh, Evan Lowenstein. He hasn't said anything yet. Uh, Evan, you've already got fans, but uh, you've said something which I think is, might make you rather unpopular. You said that as an artist, and Evan, you're an artist and an entrepreneur, very successful uh, uh, folk uh, singer, also uh, the, f uh, the founder and CEO of Stage It. You said, as an artist, it's our responsibility to know what our fans want better than they do. So Evan here knows better than all of you guys. So Evan, defend yourself. What did you mean by that? Well, I specifically meant that uh, as artists, <clears throat> we have our, our fans are our, our customers. And uh, sometimes we have to be very careful. Uh, the specific example in the context that I mentioned in that, st in that uh, article was that um, we have to be very careful when we listen to our fans and to what extent. So we need to pay very close attention to our fans as consumers, as customers, and then give them back something, what we think they want or what we know they want and not necessarily what they're asking. There's a famous, um, I believe it's, uh, who's Henry Ford, I think, said the line. If, my, if I asked my customers what they, uh, what they wanted, they would have said faster, faster horses. Um, I don't think that consumers knew they wanted a car because it hadn't existed. So in the, in the uh, specific context of that, um, I was saying that when an artist walks off stage and the fans scream for an encore, <coughs> Uh, the artist will come back. Um, but I think that you'll be hell bent or hard pressed to find a time when there aren't fans who are saying, come back, come back. And I think that an artist needs to know at what point they say, okay, enough's enough for tonight to leave the audience wanting more. And we live in a generation where, um, <clears throat> where you know, Google and social media has allowed fans the ability to have an artist on their terms whenever they want. So we need to be a little bit mindful of that and try to bring back mystery in this relationship. Um, and there are ways in which you can do that, and stage it is one of those things. So that's what I was talking about. Uh, the modern, I think, the, the modern equivalent of Henry Ford is Steve Jobs, who very famously said about the iPhone, I don't know if it was the iPhone or the iPad or the iPod, said something like, you know, we don't ask, we don't ask consumers what they want, we tell them what they want. So <coughs> you are in the music business then, either perhaps Steve Jobs or uh, Henry Ford, what are you doing at Stage It that tells the fans what they want and are they happy with it? Well, we're not, we're actually not. So, so we are and we aren't, right? So the fact is that um, artists by their very nature are entrepreneurs. They're content creators, they're passionate as hell what they do, about what they do, and nobody knows what they do and their relationship with their fans better than they do. So what we've created with Stage It is a platform that allows the artists um, to be able to do that. You know, I, I sat down with uh, the, uh, the opportunity to sit down um, with Lior Cohen recently, and the first thing he said is, what's the secret sauce? Lior Cohen being? Lior, Lior Cohen, the chairman of Warner Music Group. Right. And he said, what's the secret sauce of Stage It? And I said, honestly, it's just getting out of the way and letting an artist and, and the fans get come together. And the, we give the artists a lot of flexibility on how much to charge, how to charge. We have a, a feature called Pay What You Can. Um, for those of you who don't know, Stage is an online platform that allows artists to connect with their fans through video, through live experiences um, online. It's uh, almost like video Twitter, if you will, um, but the experiences can be anywhere from five minutes to 30 minutes. Um, we have a tip jar on the back end. So some artists, every artist um, is in a different phase, the artists are in different phases of their career. Um, for if you're an emerging artist and you're just starting out, you're, you're very much into using social media, getting out there as much as you can. Um, as you become a more established artist, you have to be a little bit more mindful about how you relate with your fans and how much you do that. And it's just a little bit of, uh, so I don't want to say playing the game, but there is an element of how to connect with your fans where you keep it interesting for, for you as well as for them. And so um, our platform allows every artist of different size to, to, to use the tools that we've created for them to create that, keep that interesting. And yes, they are very much liking it. So we're, we're very fortunate, we're very excited about that. So Evan, the future of the music business, if there is to be a future, uh, is about the relationship between the artist and the fan. You say it's about dating, love, texting, and marriage. Uh, where's the money in that, though? Isn't there a fundamental problem in that the fans don't want to pay and the artists to be artists have to be paid? Yes, absolutely. First of all, I didn't write that. That was the, uh, the I guess the editor put that headline in there. Never blame editors. <laughs> Never blame editors. Uh, here's, here's, here's what it is. So I personally believe that there's, a, that there's become a challenge with, uh, with fans paying for static content. Um, and um, I believe to, to better understand why fans are not paying for content, we have to look at it from their vantage point. 
for starters, to date, I don't think we've really given um, a lot of opportunities for fans to, to pay. Um, but uh, before I get into that, I will tell you that um, the challenge is that fans value time. Um, my fans, as I've mentioned before, maybe people have heard this, um, I've said that my fans are store clerks, they fold t-shirts at the Gap, they're kindergarten teachers, and they're surgeons. Um, and um, they can't, this notion of, of cutting and pasting, of recording a record for six months and then asking someone to spend 99 cents on, on a single or, or a record months if not years after the song was done is, uh, is, is a little bit foreign to them. They can't fold one t-shirt and then cut and paste. They can't uh, you know, do a surgery uh, and then cut and paste. Every single thing that they do requires them to be present in the moment. And so what we're doing with Stage It is recognizing that fans will spend money for an experience, for an artist's time. So we've done away with the video, uh, video on demand. We're going directly to a video on demand generation and giving artists the ability to say, I'll be playing tonight at six o'clock and it will not be archived. We believe in value equals experience over frequency, which is that the value of any experience is in direct proportion to the frequency of that event. Um, <clears throat> and so we believe that what we're doing is by creating these once in a lifetime experiences, uh, even if they happen every day, um, is, a, is a real value to the artist. And again, it's just, it's thinking with the fan uh, and with, with sort of the fan's eyes because a fan goes to work every single day and has to put in an honest out eight hours or whatever it is of their time. And um, when they see an artist on the other end who's actually there present with them, they, they find a tremendous amount of value. And, and to, to, to a guy who makes $35 an hour, or $8 an hour, they're gonna, they're gonna pay differently than a person who makes 500, maybe not, maybe differently in terms of what well, might pay less or more. But the point is that people are, we're giving the fans the ability to pay for an experience and they're really, really showing us that um, that there's a, a lot of value to that. So there's money and intimacy. There's a tremendous amount of money and intimacy, intimacy, absolutely. And what is the impact of this new, perhaps we might call intimate or uh, intimacy economy? What's the relationship between that and piracy? Because of course it was piracy that played an extremely important role in destroying the original recorded music industry. <clears throat> Well, there is no piracy uh, in this situation because we don't archive anything. So an experience is not something that can be pirated. Um, we believe that it's very difficult to monetize that which you cannot exclusivitize. Uh, so in the scenario we've created, um, we are selling experiences and you can't pirate an experience. An experience is something that you live through and you enjoy and um, something you take with you forever. So we have actually sidestepped the whole notion of piracy. Uh, I'm not saying it's not a real issue to be uh, contended with, but for our platform, uh, we don't even we don't even deal with it. We're we're selling an artist's uh, time and their experience, and the fans are paying for it. So, so you can't pirate intimacy. Uh, what is the biggest challenge in from an economic point of view in this new model? What are you struggling most with? Um, I, interestingly enough, I think it's just about uh, you know getting uh, you know for us we would need to ramp up and getting more artists on the platform. And I think there is a uh, when, it's when we talk to people within the industry themselves, I think there's a challenge uh, for them to understand. The audience seems to understand it incredibly well, um, but sort of, uh, it's, it, there's a little bit of an education hurdle in terms of the industry themselves getting it. Uh, when I sit and talk to people about it, it takes a few minutes, but once they see it and they experience it, uh, we're over that hump. So that's just, if that's our biggest problem, I will absolutely take it. So the audience is ahead of the artist? The audience, uh, 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 yes, in many respects. I know that sounds silly from where we started, but the audience, uh, when an, the art, not necessarily, because the artists who are cutting edge, who are getting it, are doing it and, and leading the way. So um, yes, in some respects, yes. In some respects, not. And should the audience then be an essential partner in all new business models? I don't know. Uh, in some cases, yes. In some cases, no. I don't know. In terms of, I can speak just on behalf of Stage It or because on behalf of other companies. So ultimately, it's still the audience's <laughs> role to be an audience and pay for their stuff. Uh, we think so. To be a part of everything. And uh, we're giving the audience the opportunity to, uh, to relate with the artist on the way that they'd like to. See, I, I don't think that we've created a platform where we're giving artists just the ability, we're, ju we're just giving the artists the ability to make money. We've created a platform that allows um, fans to pay, and I think there's a tremendous willingness, high willingness to pay on the fans' part, in particular when they know that the money's going directly to an artist. The old model was uh, going to, uh, to, the, to the record store, to the record label, to the manager, to the artist, and now we're giving fans the ability to go directly to the artist, and uh, that means a great deal to them. So we're not pulling money from fans at all. We're actually, th we're opening the opportunity in our tip jar. We're seeing that up to 39% of, of all of our revenue is coming from that, which is money that they're putting in on their own. So. 
Um, uh, the audience should go, of course, to stageit.com, right? They certainly should. Thank you, Evan, very Thank much. Thank you.